Uh, welcome all. And uh, today's new topic, electrophoresis. So electrophoresis, I'll talk in uh, three different parts. First part, we'll be talking about the general principles, how electrophoresis is done and why the utility of electrophoresis is there. And then there's a part of the serum protein electrophoresis. So we start with that first part. And so just we can start with and give it a uh, first look at it. What is electrophoresis? By definition, it's a separation technique based on migration of a charged particle under the influence of an electric field. So the mixture of molecule, uh, molecule or mixture of proteins or whatsoever, the mixture which gets a different charge in an electric field and migration means is difference of migration of the fields leads to separation of those things. So this is what in the first picture you will see how electrophoresis pattern and the final electrophoresis uh, separation of the uh, proteins. So therefore we will talk about a bit on that. So electrophoresis refers to the migration of all charged solutes particle in a liquid medium under the influence of an electric field. That means this is the area of application. Okay. And the electric field is there from negative to positive. And therefore, the it is moving towards positive. That the more the anions, more the negatively charged will move more towards positivity. So here, after uh, separation, you can see some of proteins which are very highly electronegative can move towards the positive end. That means the anode. And the, those who are highly uh, electropositive will move towards the negative end. So therefore, because of their different moving, they will end up separating in the media. So this is how a serum electrophoresis looks like. It's an electrophoretic apparatus under which the electrophoresis is done. And then you can scan this particular the end product. You will get a graphs like this, where you will find this albumin is separated. Then alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2. And the entire gamma section, these are separated all because of the separate charge of a electrophoretic in an electrophoretic field. So, go for the history of it. So, Antisilius was the first person to discover this electrophoresis pattern. So, it was first what he discovered is a moving boundary electrophoresis on a liquid medium. And in about 1937, for which he has been awarded to a Nobel Prize in 1948 and it started the basic of electrophoresis and gradually with the basic of electrophoresis with time it became more and more uh, I should say advanced. So what is the advanced technologies I will come later on but we will uh, have this general principles like this that what is that? Uh, basically, if you think of an ion or uh, if you think of an amino acid, the amino acid basically lives in a condition which is in a zwitterion formation. That means it has got both a plus and a negative ion in it. So the net charge of that ion becomes zero. It's called isoelectric pH. Now, if you treat it in alkaline pH, it becomes more negatively charged or I should say it's an anion. But if you treat it in acidic pH, rather it creates a more cation and moves towards a cathode. So therefore, this because uh, since the use of buffer is very important here. If you use the buffer to make an alkaline pH, the entire zwitterion will form like a, or it behave like a anion. If it is done with an acidic pH, it will move like or behave like a cation. So therefore, this means that every amino acid has got the capacity to behave as a cationic ion or an anionic ion. It depends on what pH you are keeping this ion to. And if it, if it reaches the isoelectric pH, it becomes chargeless. In that particular condition, you cannot move that particular part. Uh, one. That is that has been used later on in advanced technology of electrophoresis. We will come later on on our next episode. So first, in this case, you just have to understand that the electrophoresis factor is that electromotive force. What is that? That is the uh, difference of voltage or that is between the 
cation and anion. That is actually the electromotive force which drives the one ion from one end to another. And therefore, if you have got the velocity of the moving particle, that means under this EMF or influence, how the movement of the particle is happening. So it is, and the, another condition is called electrophoretic mobility, which is entirely separate. We have three different terms. One is electrophoretic mm, force, that is a force which is driving the particle towards velocity, that means under the force which is applying the movement velocity which is created here. But end of the day, electrophoretic mobility depends on the velocity on which it is moving and other factors like friction. I'm coming to run with that. So you see the electromotive force, when electrophoresis from negative, there's a positive uh, one. That means this is uh, anode and uh, cation. This is cathode. So it is a positively charged electrode and this is, uh, this is a negative charge. So there is a, uh, what should I say, uh, conductivity is there. And so the circuit is on. So there is an electrophoretic circuit is there. So an electromotive force is driving the molecule more from this end to this end. Okay. And when some particle is getting moved from one end to another end, so due to this process, they develop some friction. So whatever, if you drive in the air also, the air gives a friction. If you, uh, if you drive in the road also, road gives a friction. So everything which is moving will also get a friction from the medium on which it is moving. No. So now the friction depends on so many things. So friction depends on first, size and shape of the molecule. Obviously, if the molecule is big enough, so it will be having more friction or maybe the surface area is high. So more surface area, more the friction. Secondly, poor size of the medium. So the medium is liquid or semi-solid or whatever. So they create the pore through which the particles are moved. And if the pore is smaller in size, the friction will be very high. If the pore is bigger, obviously the friction will be much less. And last, viscosity of the buffer. Very important. If the buffer is highly viscous, that means if our buffer is crowded with molecules, so it will obviously have a higher friction. So the three things depends and three things actually designs it. Uh, the uh, the friction that is the viscosity, size and shape, and also pore size of the medium. Now go to some calculations of it. We do some mathematics now. What is the velocity of migration of a molecule? Velocity is depending on first the electromotive force that is called E. Q is the total charge on the molecule, and F is the friction. So let's describe a bit. Electrical field or potential gradient. What is that? It is the potential gradient between the two electrodes, the two uh, ends of the field. That means the voltage. So therefore, higher the electric field, higher will be the push for the molecule. Now, Q is the total electrical charge in the molecule. If the molecule is less charged, so it will be weak and responding lower towards this electromotive force. If the charge is very high, the response of dragging or repelling, both, whatever may be, will be high depending on its electrical charge of the molecule. So the molecule electrically more, that is more electronegative, will run faster towards a positive one. Less electronegative, will move slower because it has got less charge so that it get, gets less force to drive on. Less friction coefficient. So therefore, it sees the voltage and the charge on the molecule as the same time which is opposed by the frictional uh, coefficient. That means if friction is high, that uh, the volt or that is velocity will be inversely proportional and two the other things are proportional. So, therefore, higher the electro EMF, have more faster the mobility, higher the charge in the molecule, higher the motility, the mobility. If friction is high, it will be slowy. Now, there is another term, electrophoretic mobility. First, you are talking about the velocity. Now, in velocity, how much it drives? So, that is electrophoretic mobility means the ratio of velocity uh, of the ion to the electric field. That is means per EMF, per unit EMF, how much the velocity is. That is decide, described by the mu. Mu equals to V by E. Now, you know what is V? 
is eq by f so therefore e is getting nullified so the electrophoretic mobility now directly be, uh, becomes our uh, calculation between the charge of the molecule and the friction so higher the charge on the molecule electrophoretic mobility is high and bigger the molecule or uh, mass is very high friction is high so electrophoretic mobility is depending on the charge on the molecule divided by the friction generated by the molecule when it is moving so simple charge by friction and if friction is dependent on mass that means larger the mass friction is larger then it's purely a charge to mass ratio so the electrophoretic mobility depends on charge to mass ratio factors which are affecting electrophoresis what are the internal factors are charge magnitude that higher the charge better the mobility charge density that is very important if the charge is dense on the surface of the electrophoretic mo molecule it will its move its movement is faster molecular weight is inversely proportional larger the mole higher the molecular weight slow it goes shape of the molecule is obviously small molecules move faster and bigger molecules move slower because because of its high shape it generates more friction external factors like ph of the buffer very important viscosity of the buffer as i already told higher the viscosity higher the friction strength of electric field obviously the electric field is strong enough then the entire process becomes faster and temperature is very important because i'll tell later on sometimes a very high temperature can destroy the entire uh, condition the role of buffer what is the role of buffer as you understand this electrophoretic path is there which is not totally conductive it is the buffer which gives you the free ion to move from this part and therefore the conductivity is maintained by the buffer and secondly the buffer is the one which decides that molecule becomes ionized in which step time whether it is a cation or a anion or whatsoever so it helps in ionization and number 2 also the maintenance of the conductivity buffers are different types of buffers barbiton buffer is mostly used for proton protein electrophoresis but has got poor resolution and weak buffer phosphate buffer mainly for enzyme separation but it has got low buffering capacity and high conductivity free step buffer which is mostly used for nucleic acid separation free edta acetate buffer which is mostly again for nucleic acid separation they are good for resolution good for buffering capacity but conductivity is low free lysine buffer is more used in protein separation with a high buffering capacity but conductivity yet low not a very high conductivity now what's the role of electrophore heat in electrophoresis this is very important in excessive heat generation that can melt the gel or that can burn the paper so therefore excess heat generation cannot be tolerated you have to keep it in mind that there should not be excess heat generation not only that so that increased rate of diffusion can happen which can harden the separated molecules sometimes one heat generation leads to convection current as you know by convection heat is distributed in the entire liquid so because of convection the separated molecule again can be disturbed and also it can distort the band shapes lastly if the heat is so high it can denature the proteins also so therefore keeping heat in control is a major important thing in electrophoresis this is how electrophoresis apparatus looks like this is a gel tank where you actually pour the buffer this is a power supply and these are the electrical leads which will create a electrical gradient over here the because this one segment will be put in the positive one in the negative side and once you keep the buffer then the circuit becomes complete for electricity now you place the gel over here and fit applic apply the molecule with the electrical current uh, flowing from this circuit the proteins will be separated now components of electrophoresis system is one power supply and a chamber buffer proper gel is mostly i'll talk about gel later on gel casting materials which make the gel 
Then loading dye, that means what after separation, you have to pull dye to make them visible. So that it stains and after that, you need to destain on that. So the entire system will come literally in the hands-on training part. So I'm not describing any details. So this part is basically the uh, theory part of the electrophoresis. So we'll end it here. In part two, we'll do uh, detail go with the seven propane electrophoresis. And also uh, the rest part, it is how it is uh, interpreted and other parts of electrophoresis. What are the types of media? They're all will be coming in the part two. So uh, keep on looking at it and we'll complete the entire episode in three different parts. Thank you.